Okay, in this first recording, we will show how to create an Excel spreadsheet to convert between decimal and binary and back again. The theoretical background for this program is given in this document, chapter 1.04. The name is MWS underscore gen underscore AAE underscore SPE underscore binary representation. It should be in your list of files. And I'm not going to go through the theory in detail, but you can see here the difference between a decimal representation, which is familiar to you, and a binary representation. Binary representation has only ones and zeros. And the significance of this binary representation is given here. You multiply the ones by powers of two, just like base 10 up here, where you multiply by powers of 10, except you're using powers of two. For more of the theory, you can read the background uh, in this document. Now, uh, in, you can see in this document, they show different ways to convert. Here they give a flow diagram that shows how to convert from uh, decimal to binary. And I'm going to implement this in a spreadsheet. So I'm going to use a program called LibreOffice, which is very similar to Excel. You can do on Excel if you'd like. Uh, LibreOffice is free. You can download it from www.libreoffice.com and I'm going to open a copy and see how this works. I want to use LibreOffice Calc. So I'm going to click on this icon here and just take a minute to start up. Okay, let me remove my spreadsheet so that it's where you can see it. All right, so you have a titled spreadsheet here, and then you have cells here. So I'm going to make a spreadsheet to convert from decimal to binary. Now, the way to put stuff in the cells is click on the cell and start typing. So this spreadsheet is going to do conversion from decimal to binary. Now I want to insert a right arrow, which is a special character. So I'm going to insert special character. All right, this gives me a list of characters in the Arial font. My special character is in the symbol font. So I'm just going to type in, uh, in this box, I'm going to start typing symbol S, Y, M. All right, here's the symbol font. I'm going to scroll down to where I get the right arrow. And I'll click OK. All right, so you can see that put a right arrow there. And then I want to convert to binary. Now, unfortunately, you see that it still thinks that this is symbol font. So let me backtrack here. And I want to convert this back to Arial font. I could just typing, start typing Arial. Okay, and it will select that. So binary. Okay, so this spreadsheet will do conversion from digital to binary. Okay. So let me input a decimal number. So here's my input and a decimal number. Again, I'm just typing into the cells and hitting return when I finish the typing. Let me start with a decimal number, uh, 543.21. All right. Now, to make it clear that this is an input area, I'm going to highlight this in a particular color. Here, the color they give me is, uh, let's go with yellow here. And you can see that this decimal number here doesn't quite fit in the box, so I'm going to go up here to the edge of the column. You can see how the icon has changed to a double arrow, and I'll move it to the right. 
And now I have this yellow input area so that later on, if another user wants to use this, all they have to do is type in a different number and the program will be able to convert any decimal number into binary. Now, not quite any. There's going to be a limit to the capability of my program. I'm going to do a conversion program that works for numbers up to approximately 1,000. And I'll show you how you can make that uh, bigger, that you can convert numbers bigger than that. Okay, so, so what I'm going to do here is uh, uh, let me arrange the spreadsheet here now. Uh, the, if you read the chapter, it talks about how you convert the integer part and the fractional part differently. So I'm going to put two separate columns, for one for the integer part and one for the fractional part. So here's integer part. And I'll deal with the integer part here, and then I'll put fractional part over here. You can see I need to make this column a little bit larger. So I'm going to go over here, see that how the double arrow change, drag it over, and I have a large, larger column. All right. Now, uh, I'm going to arrange, let's start with the integer part. I'm going to arrange this spreadsheet, as I said, to deal with numbers up to 1,000. It turns out that 1,000 is 2 to the 10th power. To do 2 to the 10th power, uh, I'm going to need 11 digits. One digit for 2 to the 0, one digit for 2 to the 1, one digit for 2 to the 3. For, I'm sorry, did one digit for 2 to the 2, one digit for 2 to the 3, etc. Right, so I'm going to need 11 rows here. So I'm going to count down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, you can't see that. Let me move this up a little bit. Sorry, too much stuff open here. Let me make this smaller. And you can see the whole sheet a little bit. Now let's try that again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Now this is where I'm going to start. And I'm also actually going to go backwards. So let me start with the integer part of the number that I input it. So here, in order to type in a formula into an Excel or a spreadsheet cell, you need to type equals first. Always remember, when you're typing in a formula, it has to begin with equals. Since I want the integer part, the spreadsheet has a built-in function for doing that, and it's called int. Okay, and I want to take the int of that number that was inputted, so I want to go back up. Uh, to go back up, I'm just hitting the up arrow on my keyboard. And here's the number that I want to take the in integer part of. You can see if I select this cell, it has, says A4 here, and it also outlines the cell that I've selected. Okay, so what I want in this cell down here is the integer part of A4. Now, for some reason, it doesn't seem to be in the right box. Uh, I think, no, actually, I think we're okay. I'm not sure why this, uh, okay, so that just be, all right. So, um, uh, we'll begin with this uh, number here. Okay, now, uh, what's going to happen is I'm going to get the binary digits from lowest to highest. Look at this number 543. If I want to express this as a sum of powers of 2, you can see that this is an odd number. Since it's an odd number, my last digit is going to have to be a 1, because I need to get an odd number, I need to have a 1 times 2 to the 0. All the higher powers of 2 are even numbers. To get an odd number, I'm going to have to have 1 times 2 to the 0. Okay, so whenever you have an odd number, I'm going to get a binary digit of 1 in the last place. If you have an even number, 
it's going to have a binary digit of zero in the last place. So I want to put over here a value that's equal to one if this number here is odd and equal to zero if this number here is even. And I'll show you how to do that. If I take this formula and I take this number here and I subtract, let me do the formula and then I'll explain what I'm doing. Two times the integer of this number divided by two. All right, so that's the formula I typed in. If that's too quickly, you can pause the video and as long as you want and duplicate this formula. All right, now this got a one. What does this formula mean? Let me click here and you can see it. This formula takes the number here and it subtracts two times the integer part of the number over two. Now think about it. If the number is even and I divide by two, I haven't lost anything. It's still an integer. When I multiply by two, I get the same number back again. If this number is odd, on the other hand, then when I divide by two, I'm going to get a fraction. When I take the integer part, I lose 0.5. Multiply by two means the number is smaller by one. That's why in this case, I got a one here resulting from the 543. If I had changed this number to 544, for instance, and go down here and see what happens, you see I get a zero. Because uh, when this is even, I divide by 2, I'm going to get 262. Multiply by 2, I get 544 again. All right, so this is a good way to give a result that's 0 for an even number, 1 for an odd number. Okay. I want to get 543 back again. A good way to undo anything you've typed in a spreadsheet is to type Control Z. So when I type Control Z, it returns me back to 543. All right. So this gives me the smallest whole number digit. Right? But I want to get the next digit. So let me uh, go uh, to, the, to the next digit. What I want to do, since I've taken care of the lowest digit, basically what I want to do is divide this by 2 and uh, do it again. However, if I divide this by 2, I'm not going to get an integer. Uh, however, if I subtract this number over here, I will get an integer. So here what I want to do is I want to take equals. And I'm going to take this number here, 543, and subtract 1. That's going to give me an even number, and then I'll divide by 2. Okay. And I get 271. And you can verify that that's true. So what I've done is I've taken off the lowest digit. I've shifted my number downward, and I want to do the same thing with this number. Okay, I want to uh, get the same formula here that I had for 543 for this number 271. Now, spreadsheets have a very convenient way of doing this. It's called fill. So I'm going to select these two cells here. I'm going to edit, then fill, and then up. Now, let me check the formula here. If I double click on this box, it will show me the formula. Uh, now notice what what it what it's done here. Uh, this formula now takes this cell here. A15 refers to this cell here. It's taking this value and subtracting two times the integer part of the value over two. Very same formula I had in this cell. Only this time it's using the 271 instead of the 543. So I've successfully cloned my formula to apply to this new number that's going to give me the second binary digit. Now, why stop here? I want to do the same thing up here. I want to now take 
the I want to shift this over one again. I want to divide this by two, but I need to subtract this digit first. And then I'm going to complete complete the uh, result all the way up until I get the highest binary digit. Now I can do this automatically with my spreadsheet by selecting these two cells. Notice that when you select cells, you don't click down here on the square here. If I select cells, I just click in the cell, hold down the mouse, and move around. Actually, what I prefer to do is I click in the cell, then I can use the hold down the shift button, hold down the shift button, and you can use the right, left, up, down arrows. Since I want to select two columns and the cells above this cell, I'm going to hold down the shift button, arrow to the right. I'm just hitting the up arrow here. I want to select this entire region. What I want to do is clone my formula to the cells above. So I'm going to go to Edit, Fill, Fill Up. Okay. So you can see what's happening here. This last line here takes care of the last binary digit. And this line here takes care of the next to last, all the way up to the higher binary digits. Okay. So these two columns take care of the integer part of my input number. So I want to distinguish that from the fractional part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this areas. Again, I'm holding down the shift key and using my arrows to select this area. I'm going to make this a different color. Let me make it a blue or something like that. That's pretty blue. Okay, so that's the this takes care of the integer part of my decimal number. Now I want to take care of the fractional part. Okay, uh, now uh, how do you get the binary digits for the fractional part? Uh, again, you can read the document. If this decimal here was bigger than 0.5, that would mean that the fractional part has a factor of at least one half. And I would have to have a binary digit of one immediately after the decimal place. In this particular case, this fractional part is zero. So how can I tell if the binary digit will be, if the fractional part is less than one half, I want a zero. And if that number is bigger than 1, then I will have a 1 as my binary digit. And if that number is not bigger than 1, then I'll have a 0 as my binary digit. So let's do that. In this fractional part, in this first cell, I'm going to take the fractional part here and multiply it by 2. Now, to get the fractional part, what I want to do is subtract out the integer part so I want to take this number, and I'm going to subtract out the integer part of the same number. So to type that in, I can click here. And I'm going to multiply the result by 2. So I'm going to click here, add a parenthesis, click here, add a parenthesis, and multiply by 2. Okay, so we can verify that this value here is two times the fractional value here. All right, so as I mentioned, this number is less than one, so the fractional part is going to be zero. So let me write here, here's the corresponding binary digit. Okay, actually I want to put, by, this, these are also the binary digits, so I'm going to put that here. That's the binary digits for the integer part. These are the binary digits for the fractional part. As I mentioned, if this number is bigger than 1, the binary digit will be 1, otherwise it's 0. So what I can do here is I can take the integer part of this number over here. Okay, and that's 0. Again, we can check this. If this number were 543.61, 
then the first binary digit should be a 1 in the fractional part, and we can see that, in fact, this is true. All right, let me go back to 543.21. I go back by hitting, holding down the control button and pressing Z. All right, so I've taken care of my first binary digit. Now notice what we did with the integer part. We kept on dividing by 2 and picking up the next binary digit. In this case, we want to do the corresponding thing, except instead of dividing by 2, we want to multiply by 2. Okay. So what I'm going to take here is uh, 2 times this value. And you can see that it's still less than, than 1. Now, it's still less than 1. To get the binary digit here, I want to do the same thing as I did here. So I'm going to select these two cells, Edit, Fill, Day. All right. Now, what would I do for the next cell? Well, what I would do for the next set, I multiply this by 2 and find the integer part just the same as before. So for the succeeding cells, I'm going to take this, take these, and then I hold down the shift, press the down arrow repeatedly, and I'm going to do the edit fill down. Okay. Now, we can see here that there's a problem. I want to get binary digits in this column. These are obviously not binary digits. Binary digits are zeros or ones. So we need to debug this problem. What's going on here? Well, these first three binary digits are correct. 0, 0, 1. We can see this value of 0.2. 0.2 is less than 0.5, so there's no factor of a half here. It's also less than 0.25, so there's no factor of a quarter. However, it's bigger than 0.125, so there should be a factor of 1 eighth. So these first three binary digits are correct. This means 0 times 1 half plus 0 times 1 fourth plus 1 times 1 eighth. This one, however, is incorrect. Why is that? Because when I multiplied this by 2, I picked up a 3, which is too big. I actually want to subtract off this binary digit before I multiply by 2. All right? So that's easy to change. It, just my formula was not correct. Instead of having this formula here, what I should do is take 2 times, put a, let me put a parenthesis there, 2 times C, C6 minus this binary digit, whatever it is. Okay. In that case, if I get a number bigger than 1, as I do here, I'll subtract off the 1, and I'll never get bigger than 1 in the entire part over here. All right, so now I've corrected this formula. Let me go ahead and fill down, hold down the shift, repeatedly press the arrows, edit, fill down. Okay, and now you can see that I have binary digits. Okay, all right, now I want to distinguish this also from the entire part, so I'm going to go ahead and make this orange. The color for the background is over here, so I'm going to turn this into orange. Okay, so here I have the whole part and the fractional part. So these are the digits. The binary number is actually 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, point, 0, 0, 1, 1, etc. I'd like to arrange this a little bit more nicely so it looks like a binary number. So I'm going to put my output over to the right here. Now notice I have 11 digits for the integer part, 11 digits for the non-integer part. And I'm going to put one place for the decimal point. So I'm going to need 11 plus 11, 22 plus 1, 23 columns. I'm going to need 23 columns 
to contain my result. Now, 23 columns is uh, going to be a lot of real estate over here. I want to uh, compress that a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and select 23 columns. Notice how I clicked up here on, on the column heading F. And I'm going to hold down the Shift key and press the right arrow 22 times to give me 23 columns altogether. So this is one column, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 19, 22. Now you couldn't see the selection, but if I move this slider over, whoops, didn't work. All right, well, let's try that again. All right, so let's cl click here, and we'll try it again. Hold down the Shift key, 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. All right. Now these columns are too fat. I want to make them skinnier. The way I can make them skinnier is I can click right-click with a right mouse button on any of these headings. So you see the Y here? I'm going to right-click on that. And here we have column width. All right, this column width is too fat, so I'm going to take it down to 0.18. And what this is going to do is it's going to skinify all of those columns that I selected. And you can see that's what happened. So now I can put my binary number in these skinny columns, and you'll be able to see it. All right, let me make this one a little bit skinny also. And my first binary digit is going to go here. All right, so let me put this so you can see what's going on. Here's where the, this is the input. All right, so I want to want to put the output over here. So output. And the output is a binary number. Actually, let me put it up one. Okay. All right, I want to move this word output to the cell above. So if I right-click on this cell, click with the right mouse, right-click, and do cut, then click where I want to move it with the left mouse, then right-click, and then paste. Then I've moved the text from this cell to this cell. All right. All right, now my output is going to be a binary number. All right. And what I want to do, do here is put the binary digits that I have here in a row instead of a column. The way to do that is to use a function in, that's built into the spreadsheet called transpose. So I'm going to type in here equals transpose. Uh, all right. I'm sorry. Made a mistake. Backtrack a little bit. Scratch that. Notice that I have 11 numbers here that I want to transpose. So these 11 columns are going to become 11 rows. So I'll start here. One, two, oops, something's wrong here. Let's try it again. One, hold down the shift key. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I'm going to select those 11 cells to put the binary digits in. This is what's called a matrix formula. I'm going to, or array formula, I guess it's really called an array formula. I'm going to type in one formula that will fill in all of these cells at the same time. So I, when I do this, I type it equals just like my usual formula. And I want to take the transpose, transpose parenthesis. Now notice that the software does this, that means it understands what I typed in, and it knows that transpose is a built-in spreadsheet function. And it's telling me that I need to input the array. That means I need to give it the cells that I want to take the transpose of. And those cells are right over here. So let me select those. Okay, start with B6. I'm just going to, this time I'm just going to take my mouse down. I want to go all the way down to here. So those are the cells that I want to take transpose of. So let me go ahead and close the parenthesis. Now this step is very, very important. When you enter an array formula, you can't just hit enter. You have to hit hold down control 
and shift. Hold down the control and shift buttons at the same time. Keep them held down, then hit enter. And you will see that you will get the digits that were arranged in this column now in row format. You can verify that these digits are the same as these. All right, uh, that's, the, that's the integer part of my binary number. Here I want a decimal point. And then here I want to get the fractional part. So let me move over so you can see what's going on. Uh, I want the fractional part here. So again, I'm going to select 11 spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I want to take the transpose of the of the fractional part, which are these binary digits here. Okay. I want to take select this whole region. Now notice it shows me the size of my selection, 11 rows, which is exactly what I want. All right. You actually don't even need to close the parenthesis on your formula because the spreadsheet is smart. I'll hold down Control and Shift and press Enter. And there are my other remaining binary digits. So let me zoom out so you can see the whole thing, see the big picture. Okay. So this is conversion from the decimal to binary. Let me make this bold face. I'm going to click here to make that bold face. Now I want to highlight this output region to to show that this is where my output is. So I'm going to select this region here. Again, I'm just holding down the shift and using the arrow key. And let's make this uh, green. Okay. I guess it's still not quite big enough for you to see the whole thing. Uh, let me take it down a little bit. All right, so now you should be able to see the whole picture. Input here, output here. Decimal number here, binary number here. Let's try one example that we know the result. We could do, for instance, 12. No, 12 is 8, to 8 plus 4. So that means there's a 1 in the 8's place, a 1 in the 4's place, a 0 in the 2's place, a 0 in the 1's place. So it should be a binary number like 1100. Zero, zero. So let's just put in an 8 and see what happens here. And there should be no fractional part. Oh, I'm sorry, I said I was going to input 12, so let's do 12, okay? And we can see that we do have 1, 1, 0, 0. This means 1 times 8 plus 1 times 4, and all the others are 0. Now, if I did 12.5, I should see a 1 in this place here, and I do. If I put in 12.75, I should see 1s in this place and this place. And I do. So we've tested out the spreadsheet and everything works fine. So in the next installment, I'll show you how to convert back again from a binary number to a decimal number. But I think that's enough for this video.